So it's the same um, same file that we're going to make the template out of. So same OTN typesetting document. Uh, again, we want to make basically a shell out of this document. I'm going to scroll through. You know, there's a lot of text here. The designer may or may not have cut text from other parts of the book to include here. So I just don't even want to have the typesetter deal with any text in this template, the file that we're going to make. So I need to remove or delete all the text in this. This is just our design file, so I'm not worried about keeping any text. To show you how you would do that, you could double click into a text box. You could grab your type tool, which is that T over here, and then start selecting text. But I just want to make sure I can select some text so that I can hit um, Command A or Control All and highlight all the text in the text flow. And I'm just going to delete this, just saying goodbye, I don't need you, I don't want you, I don't want you to be there because you may confuse the type better. When we're making this design template file, I just want it to be a bare shell that has things like the styles defined and master pages, everything the typesetter would need to put the book together. Um, now, because I've gotten rid of all that text, you see I just have a lot of extraneous pages that just have images, but we don't need these pages. So I want to delete up until or from every from the point after this first um, body text page. And to do that, so this is, if you look here, I see four. So this is page four. That means I want to delete everything from pages five till the end of the document. That's because I don't need it, because it has images that the designer put in to show what the figure captions look like, but things that are basically extraneous. Again, I just want to make this a shell, and these are just extra pages that we don't need for the designer, for, uh, for the typesetter. So in my pages window, I've selected five, and then I scroll down to the end of the document, which is page 16. I'm going to hold shift and click so that it selects all the pages between five and 16. And then with those pages highlighted, I'm going to hit the little trash icon and then delete it. There are things like figures and text boxes on the pages. So you know, InDesign just gives you a warning to, to say like, hey, there's stuff there. Do you want to get rid of that? But I know that I do. And I will say, okay. I'm going to zoom out. Just going to show you what we're left with. I'm just scrolling up. We're left with those front matter pages, the part opener and chapter opener page, and then some body text pages. So now we have that like shell that the typesetter can start with. Let me know if I've lost anybody at this point. Yeah, so we deleted all the text in the in this document as well. So that's why there's so much so many blank pages up here at the top. And we did that because the typesetter is going to start with this blank shell and then flow the InDesign uh, tag text file, the IDTT, into it. So you know we're not concerned about any of the text that was in here because they're just going to flow in the entire book into this file. So for now, we just basically need to give them the bare minimum that they need to start putting text into the file. And that's why, you know, we got rid of those images. Um, but like I said before, when your designer is working on a book like this, they may be grabbing text from different chapters because they need to show you what um, a sidebar looks like or a block quote looks like. And so that the design file is not 400 pages long, they're just going to grab little snippets of text to kind of show you how those elements are defined. And because of that, hmm, then I don't know. Are you able to scroll within the pages box, Kathy? Hmm. No scroll bar. I have to admit, I'm not quite sure that is why uh, it's behaving that way. Uh, you can, if you need to, extend how it is. That's possible. Um, uh, Elvis, if you're seeing anything different on, on the PC version, let me know, because I'm on a Mac at this point. Yeah, no, I'm not seeing anything different. I, it's just um, um, slightly darker just because of the theme on, on, gotcha. on PC. But I do see the scroll bar, so um, that is... And I guess just to make sure where we're at, 
Cassie, there's two portions of the pages. There's the top portion. These are the master pages. I'm in the bottom portions where the actual book pages are. Okay, you got it. All right, good. So, so we should, we've removed all the text from it. We've removed extraneous pages. And now we're left with just this blank template. And as a quick reminder, um, for InDesign, W is the way to sort of go back and forth between uh, this mode, which shows you where all the text boxes and margins are, and this mode, which we would call preview mode, so that it kind of shows you what the book looks like. So uh, if I you know, accidentally keep doing that just out of instinct, let me know. I don't mean to confuse anybody by, by rushing ahead or, or if I'm doing something that you're not familiar with. But here we are. We, we were left with just bare bones. We got a few text boxes that are placed, things like that. And now I want to save it as a design file. This is done by going to File, Save As. It brings up a window where we can save it as a bunch of different formats. But again, I want to save it as a design template. So here under Format, I'm going to choose Template. This number or version might be different based on the version that you're using. But it should still say you know, InDesign Template somewhere. And that's the kind of file that we need. Or not that well, we do need it, but that we're going to make. Uh, I'm going to save mine into the design folder. I can save it as a different name here. I need to pick some type of name for this file. I'm going to just call it a temp02 for template2, let's say. I'm just kind of picking out a name so we can pick out a name. Um, and I'm going to say uh, save. If I go back to that folder, in my type A folder, I saved it again to the design folder. Now I should see this InDesign template file. And this is what we would eventually put into our packaged file, our packaged folder. Again, because this is where we want the typesetter to start from. We want to give them this shell so that when they have this and the IDTT file, they flow text together and make the design file, or make the typeset out of those two components, the IDTT and the template file. So let me know at this point where are we let me know if we're caught up or if you want me to go through packaging again i can go through packaging again as well and then we'll just kind of get back to that point where we have the template and the package file so i'll actually do that i'll go through packaging as well so here's so this is still the template file we made i can know that because i see indt but i'll close this i don't need it anymore i'm going to go back to that original indesign document Type settings.indd. Open that up. And now we're just going to run through those packaging steps again. Um, we opened up this file specifically because it has things that we might need, like, you know, there's text in it, so it's using fonts. Um, it might have logo files in it. But for now, I'm going to run through the packaging steps with this file. Same place we were just at before, where we saved the file as a template, but I'm going to go from file down to package. And again, one thing I'll show you, if you don't remember where that is, I could always in my help bar search for package. It'll think for a little bit and it'll bring up menu items that align with the text you've, uh, you've put in. But for now, I'll go to file and package. Um, just to, to reiterate this, this window is merely a summary of the things that it's going to package. Again, you have the option to include text here in an instructions folder, that will, an instructions file that will get created. Um, again, like I said, I've never used it before, but it's possible that you could put in your institution, your the contact, things like that. For now, I'm, I'm not, I don't think that's important to do, so I'm just going to say continue. And then we have another window that will ask for a certain options. The options here are, do you want to include the font? Do you want to include the graphics in this folder? Um, we do. Uh, do you want to include an IDML? That could be handy for designers that aren't using the most recent version. So I want to have that option turned on. And then I want to include a PDF because that PDF will function as a static reference for the typesetter to go back to. 
I also have the option up here to name the folder. I think calling it OTN type standing folder isn't particularly handy. So I want to name it to uh, something that will line up with that design file. We named our last design file temp02. So I'm going to call this um, folder the same name. And again, we're including font, we're including graphic, and we're including the IDML file and the print PDF. And I'm going to say package. Standard warning that comes up about um, font licensing, things like that. All right. My little progress bar has stopped. And on my desktop, I see there's the folder that we just made. We made it by packaging the file. It generates a folder and other folders within it. Here are the things that are included in a packaged file, any font, um, any links. Links just means images that are included in the file, the IDML we chose to generate, the PDF we chose to generate, and then that InDesign file just makes a copy of the file that we packaged. Uh, last step we were at was taking that design file that we made, that tempo2 INDT file, and just copying it into this package folder, and then zipping this folder on a Mac, I just do that by right-clicking and saying compress. Uh, Elvis, you might know differently what it is on a, on a PC. I'm not quite sure, but we just want to make a zip file out of this at the very end, which is what we have here. This OTN type setting, tempo2.zip. On a PC, if you have uh, 7-zip, um, you would right-click just the same way. Um, go over 7-zip and then add to archive um, and hit OK and that would zip it up. Um, you could also use um, a Windows um, compression. Um, currently looking for that for, because I usually use 7-zip, uh, but um, if anybody needs those instructions, um, just let me know via the chat and I'll, I'll send it there. Yeah. And again, where, where we're at here is we're just kind of collecting all these different aspects that the typesetter is going to need to create the book. Um, your images, fonts, uh, a template file, and then either the IDTT file or the Word document for the book, the final composed manuscript for the book. 